through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Michelle Monahan, mm -hmm. uh, one of the stars of Gus. You probably know her from any number of other things: Due Date, Source Code, Heartbreak Kid. Like you've you've been around for a long time now. Yep. Um, what was it that attracted you to this project? I know you've done the pregnant uh, role before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems like that might not be the, the, yeah. the selling point in and of itself, yeah, I no. imagine. Yeah, no. You know, um, I've done that in, in real life and on film already. So, no, that definitely wasn't the selling point. I think for me was this this character that was really overtly comedic. Yeah. And, um, and someone that was unlike any other character I've ever played, truly. <laughs> someone with real like arrested development you know um it was very loose and um and very irreverent and that's a quality that i that's really prevalent in my own life mm. um i'm pretty irrever or irreverent and irrelevant at times no but and i just i loved her um i i just loved the idea of um of playing somebody really, really loose and that at times is very socially awkward, you know. Most of the characters I play are a little bit stable, a little bit grounded, sensible. And I guess this that's one, true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was unlike anything I've attempted before and, um, and I sincerely had a great time playing her. And as I've been trying to coin thus far during these press conferences or these interviews, um, you guess you're the one gussing your friend or uh, your baby to your friend. I am. I'm creating this verb, just FYI. Are you yeah. gussing? Oh yeah. my God, that's so funny. Because it's yeah, not really so an abduction. It's, no, I mean, it's giving it's it to is. You. I kind of guss the kid out, yeah. right? I guess. I guess. That's funny. Um, you know, yeah. And I and it's. I guess it is a little unconventional, a little unusual. But what I do really love is that um, it really. It's really more about this great friendship and what friends yeah, totally. will do for each other, and that um, even though while it's unconventional, it, it, unconventional, I feel like it's it's a very grounded sort of relationship and a very um, sort of um, an easy choice for her because she's in such a different pla part of her life and a different frame of mind where she's clearly not ready to become a mother herself, mm -hmm. but her very best friend. In the world is, and um, and so she'd do anything for her best friend, as many of us would. You have a show. You have like you and Rada both have these pretty dramatic turns mm -hmm. at the end, where you go from a very much more sort of comedic mm -hmm. character to a much mm -hmm. more dramatic role. Mm -hmm. Is that hard? I mean, obviously you've been acting for <laughs> years now, but yeah. just just as someone watching, it just seems like it'd be hard to be like yucking it up one day and then the next day it's sort of like, all right, here we go. Well, so, I mean, that is part of our job. <laughs> so, and, 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 and honestly, you know, I think that's real life. You know, I think that you know, people that are going through a really great time in their life or going through a really, really rough time, um, their life at the same time is marked with moments of, of levity, you know, of fun. Or, um, so I, 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 I think in the most part, um, you know, we experience things that are a little dramatic mm. or disappointing or heartbreaking at the same time that we experience things that are really uplifting or joyful or fun. Um, I mean, it says that was the saying, like, you know, you can't have joy without pain or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I really I really sort of wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, I feel like that's a very kind of grounded thing. And, and I also believe that, um, you know, it's clearly one of the most miraculous things, sort mm. of giving, giving birth. And it's just an incredibly <laughs> powerful experience. I'll, I'll have to take your word yeah, for that. Yeah, I'll have to take my word for it. And it's an incredibly powerful experience, so it's sort of, it, it didn't really necessarily surprise me. You know, we oftentimes hear of that, you know, women um, that do surrogacy and things like mm. that. I think they've got like a, a 48 hour or three day period in which they can actually, you know, um, legally change their mm. mind. Um, and I and I think that's probably a good thing because it can really you know it, it can affect you certainly and I in that that um broke my heart for for Rada's, for Lizzie's character certainly I, I mean I mean I love all the characters they're all very good but there's something I really liked about both um, you and Michael oh, Weston yeah. oh like you God. both are, have this sort of element and you even ask him at one point you know like if when his mother gave him up did that make him feel yeah, less, less it's sort of like I, I mean I, 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 
Just to put sort of a context of maybe why this is why I like it. I love the movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. Like, and you guys kind of feel <laughs> like the like somebody from who's maybe on that island of misfit toys. Yeah. Like you, 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 you're not. There's not. You're not like necessarily dysfunctional. Yeah. But you just. We don't aren't, quite fit in, yeah, but we couldn't. We fit in with each other exactly, and that's yeah. why it's really nice. Yeah, I really loved the, those characters and that relationship they have. And you know, he was so great to work with. I can't say enough about Michael as an actor. He's tremendous, so so funny. But I love that idea that we're these kinds of these two little misfits, and we're drawn to each other mm-hmm. because of that. And um, and it's really sweet, and I think it's really genuine too. I mean, oftentimes in life we we track the same the same. Well, I, I, th- I think they're like, you're, you're, I mean, it's even beyond what you're saying because, yeah. like, you know, he's, his brother keeps calling him, like, bro and stuff yeah. like that. It's like, stop calling me bro. But you, yeah. like, you're like, you know, talking to him about taking smack and yeah. this and the other. And, <laughs> like, it, there's, there's, like, a genuineness between both of you yeah. that he sees that you're not just, like, doing it because of guilt or something yeah. like that. He feels like it's that like. That I really sincerely like right. him, even though I give him a really hard time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Completely. And, Completely. But that seems like that could be challenging because you guys virtually, I mean, I, from what I understand, didn't have really any time to sort of build no, chemistry. No, sort of we didn't. Thrusting. No, 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 no. We didn't have any rehearsal time. I think, no, I don't think I had any rehearsal time with Michael. But the thing was, it was just such a great um, way. We were so, it was so fortuitous, actually, really, in how it all came together is that we all sincerely met each other. We all mm-hmm. really liked each other. And we were stuck in this house, really, for three quarters of the shoot, which wasn't a long shoot I think it was 20 days so essentially for about 15 days all working together and we had a really really good time and it's easy too with Jesse's writing because it kind of rolls off the tongue and Mm. the characters were so specific that um, as long as we knew that we kind of made them our own you know um, and stayed kind of true to the characters and um, and she let us have fun with it you know uh, one thing before I want to talk about her. Uh, I wanted to know about natural talents in the film. You do a lot of catching food in your mouth, and you do a lot of ping pong playing. What? That's any actual natural talents for either? No, one? I mean, listen. I mean, I do. My brother is really good at catching things in his mouth. So we, I remember, we used to do that a lot, like just random shit. Usually, like grapes. Yeah. But the grapes, we did a lot of the grapes, but we, I didn't end up getting pretty good at it. Um, and the ping pong, I love ping pong. I'm not very good at it, though. But that was all, those ping pong scenes were all improv. So we had a good time. That's fun. Yeah, we had a good time making those. Uh, the one thing I want to talk about her, Jessie, the director, is yeah. she's comes from an acting background. This yeah. is her first feature. Um, what is it like working with someone who is an actor and then a director? I mean, I don't know if... You worked with Clint Eastwood. I can't think of that off yeah. the time I had. But I mean, I know you worked like yeah, Duncan Jones was yeah. a pretty new director. Yeah, but Ben yeah. Affleck was also. Oh yeah, Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. That's a good gone, baby gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. You know, I think with Ben, I think maybe with Jesse a little bit. I mean, I think you just they're inside the space of the actor and the process in which we all process different information and direction and 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 how we try to convey and emote. Um, you know, listen, I think if it's on the page and you've got a great director, I don't think it really matters what their background is. If they've got a clear vision for what the character does or what motivates the character, then um, it doesn't really kind of come into come into play at all for me. I mean, it could be, honestly, a director that's been around for, you know, 30 years or it could be a director that's been around for a year, you know. I mean, one of the interesting things, though, is, like, this is an indie film Mm -hmm. like very much so um obviously i'm sure there are any number of opportunities uh, a a person uh of your star level Mm -hmm. whatever we want to categorize it uh have that i mean you could be like you know i don't know what's coming out like pacific rim or something like that's like i mean i probably could do something like pacific rim but i want to do this because i have an interest what is it sort of that you know you, is there a process that you have it's in terms really, of picking a project? Because it feels like if I were an actor, I'd yeah. be constantly worried. Be like, I would take a film and then like Christopher Nolan would call me up and be like, "You want to be an Inception?" But do you know what it is? It's it's really the material. It's really the quality of the material. Mm. And you can have great quality material in a fifty million dollar movie or an eighty million dollar movie, or you can have great quality material in a million dollar movie. And this is less than a million dollars. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, 
and especially in the last few years, I've shot a lot of low budget indies, and it's specifically because the characters are original and they're unlike anything that I've done before, as opposed to a lot of other things that I read where I feel like, you know, I've kind of tackled that before, or I don't know if I can bring anything new to that, um, or it doesn't feel challenging to me. So I'd rather sort of continue to. to to work with people, whether they're you know been around for a long time, like I said, or it's a first time director. Um, but that's a, I mean that's an interesting point though, because I mean that is the Hollywood mentality is they want to typecast who's like oh she's the girl from romantic yeah, comedies or she's yeah. the girl well, from that's action true. films it's or like whatever. you got to keep them guessing right yeah. <laughs> you want to stay out of that box yeah. really and yeah is, is that is that something you actually think about though or do you just literally t- have like a pile of scripts in front of you and you just flip through and you're like okay I like that one let's yeah, do that one I mean one. that's really what it is and that ultimately is keeps me out of the box cuz I'm I'm not I mean, I, I, I want to be able to do a range of different things. Like, I love comedy, and I love drama, and I love action, too. I mean, I've done a lot of that, and, you know, it's really, it's just in, inherently important for me as somebody who's creative to not get bored, you know? Like, I really love my job. Like, mm-hmm. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And so, as a result of that, like, I have to continue to challenge myself mm-hmm. to learn to do different things, and not just to do the expected things, sure. you know? because I would I think I'd be disappointing my, myself um, ultimately because I wouldn't be kind of stretching or, or sort of uh, spreading my wings so to speak well I mean that's that's sort of a good thing I mean you talk about doing action comedy drama what is it what is it that you want to do I mean I don't know do you want to do, do like a sci-fi love, epic no or? no no you know what I'd really love to do I'd really love to do a period piece I've never done a period piece. Something where I can... I don't know. Don't ask me when. I'm but just I'd saying, love to like, do something where I have an accent. Les like, Mis, too. No, no, no. You, you misunderstood me. I don't want to do a musical. No, I don't want to do a musical. But I would love to do something, a, a period piece of sorts. And I'm not quite sure what that is. But, um, and those are few and far between. But, um, just, yeah. Just, what's a... Um, uh, what's her name from... Um, Anna Karenina. You just need to yeah. get, get on her there track. There you go. I yeah. need to get on her you just, track. You just need to bump her out of the way because yeah. she seems to be getting all the period. Exactly. Or Kate Blanchett. Exactly. You need to like elbow watch, those two. Watch out Keira Knightley. Yeah, coming Knightley, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they seem to have that locked down. There you go. They do. Through. They do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, is there... Is, it seems like, you know, you probably do get a lot of things push at you. What was it like in terms of getting involved with this project? Like, it seems like it would be it was, somewhat of a challenge to get on your radar because I'm sure there's a lot of things that come at you any given yeah, time. Yeah, you know, it was interesting because they had met each other and I think Jesse said that she would really like me to play um, Andy perhaps and Rada happens to know a good friend of mine and so uh, Rada had sent the script to him and then he'd forwarded it to me and said listen you know they love you to play this role I think it's actually really good you'd probably really like it and I read it like in less than an hour wow. and I said wow yeah I do want to do it and it, it happened really like that um, and because I just I just loved the writing, it was such a quick mm. read and really fun. And I had been coming off something dramatic at the time, and a lot of it, my choices are, are really timing as well. You know, it's like if I've just done something, it might not kind of fall in line with what, I, what I've just done. And so I usually tend to go like I do a 180 from what I've just completed. Hmm. So um, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I'm just trying to imagine just to what keep that would, crazy. Well, I'm just you know? trying to imagine <laughs> what that would mean in the context of this movie. Like yeah. it's like Battleship Two next summer. Yeah, or something like that. yeah. I kind of forget what I did after after. Um, what, oh, I did. I do Machine Gun Preacher. Maybe no, I did. Something. Wow, this was done before maybe. Machine Gun Preacher. No, actually, no, it wasn't. I was gonna say that came out like think. two years no, 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 ago. I, or I had to think of something else. <laughs> I, I can't remember what I did. Um, but um. Oh, I know what it was. It was Better Living Through Chemistry. Okay. Somebody, I played a really, really uptight, uh, a really, really uptight very woman. See, there you go. Yeah, See, it was a very 180, so that's how my brain works. But um, uh, In terms of what you've got, what do you have coming up that people can look forward to? And where I, can people follow? I believe you have a Twitter as a recall. No, I don't. No Twitter? No, no okay. Twitter. I don't, I don't do the social Fight media the thing. I know. I don't do the social media thing. I'm MySpace? Not, I don't. I don't. No Facebook. <laughs> nothing like that. Um, but um, I have a film coming out actually April 5th with um, Willem Dafoe and Stephen Dorff called Tomorrow You're Gone. Wow. Which is really Busy. cool, yeah. And then uh, later this year, I'll have a film coming out called Better Living Through Chemistry with mm-hmm. Sam Rockwell and oh, Olivia Wilde. Fun, yeah. 
And um, and currently, I'm actually working on an HBO miniseries directed by um, Carrie Fukunaga. Um, the dude who did um, Sin Nombre. Yeah, I yeah, love that amazing. movie. He's amazing. He's amazing. He did another one too, didn't he? He did a, a remake of something. Yeah, he did. Oh, um, but Sin Nombre was amazing. He did. Um, oh, it's speaking of period pieces. Was it? Uh, was oh it God! Knightley? No, it had I, Mia. Oh, Mia. Oh gosh. Maestro. I, I no, 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 no. She, uh, she's an Australian extra. Extra. Uh, uh, she's an Australian actress. She's an Australian actress, and I will actually brutalize her last name, but I can't think of. Um, I've already done it yeah. today. Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre. Sorry. Jane Eyre. Yeah, that's you. right. I, yeah, you're right. It was great. Sorry for all the fans out there. No, no. I mean, um, C. Nombre is the one. Yeah. You're like I, Jane Eyre is all well and good. C. Yeah. Nombre is an amazing. So amazing we started movie. shooting that, and that's with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Whoa. So that'll come out in January. Wow. So I'm currently in busy, the busy, of busy, doing busy, it. busy. Yeah. yeah it sounds fun. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what the best place to keep track of you. IMDb. I don't know what is the yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Pro M I M D. I mean, that's that's where it's at, right? Very, yeah. very cool. Well, uh, I wish you luck with <laughs> Gus and any of the other ones you Thank just reeled you. off. Thank and, you. Um, more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you, Michelle. Awesome. Thank you. So nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs>